Hello, this is H.G. Bailey, and welcome back to Let's Play Final Fantasy IV. Let's head into town and stock up on some provisions before heading out. What rumor? I don't believe you. That couldn't possibly be true. I thought it was called the Serpent Road, or a Serpent Path, or whatever. Nah, I must be thinking of another game. Well, I'll keep that in mind, but I am a combat veteran. But anyway, we got an item shop, or well, I guess they call it sundries now, for some reason. Just buy your regular curative items, just like any other JRPG. But they're actually a bit more important in this particular version of the game. Let's take a look at what they got here. Uh, we got enemies right around Baron who can petrify you. Um, not immediately, but uh, having gold needles would be nice. Uh, eye drops, there's going to be enemies in the upcoming area who can do that, and just a little beyond that, there's enemies that can poison you, so they're all going to be pretty important. But, we're going to be finding a lot of that stuff, so I wouldn't worry about that for now. Uh, another thing, uh, speaking of the blind status from the eye drops there, Kane's uh, iron shield here actually protects you against the blind status, so we don't need to worry about that with him. With uh, Cecil there, his dark shield protects against the pig, mini, and more importantly, the toad status there. They don't tell you this in-game. The only way you can tell is well, getting hit by the spell itself and it'll say that you're immune to it or something. Or no effect. So yeah, that's a nice thing about shields in this game is that they help you protect against some statuses, which kind of makes sense. So I like that. But anyway, let's try and figure out where we're supposed to go next. Well, that was easy. That was pretty fast. How do you even know that I'm going to be going there anyway? What did Rosa tell everyone? But anyway, over here, you look in the bush there, you get an exclamation point, you can find a treasure, just like Final Fantasy IX. So yeah, there's going to be hidden treasure everywhere. I might not even know where all of this stuff is, so if you know something that I missed, let me know. But anyway, get another potion there, awesome. I'm not bad. I'm just drawn that way. But anyway, let's go up here, hit a switch, just like in the castle there, and we can get some treasure. We can just take whatever we want. Gnomish Bread lets you cast the Sight spell for free that lets you see the world map and perhaps get you a better idea of where to go. But uh, I don't think we really need that. Tent eye drops, can never have enough of those. Why are you worried about that with me? I'm just, uh, with the military. I'm not with the IRS. Oh, well, thank you. I suppose I am kind of with the police force in a way, and maybe I work with them, but... Yeah, give the local cop a drink or a cup of coffee while he's on patrol. Awesome. Hey, how's it going? How does everyone even know about all this? Isn't this supposed to be like a top-secret government military mission or something? I suppose it's kind of hard to keep a secret in a place like this, but still. But anyway, you can get two treasures next to that house there. Two. Two treasures. Ah, ah, ah. Oh, thank you. But anyway, got an equipment shop here, but we can't buy anything in there. Guess I gotta keep tight rein on the uh, arms supply in the area. But anyway, this is the Devil's Road area that the first guy we talked to was talking about. Uh, I don't know what that word... Dwyamer? Dwomer? I don't know. I think that's a made-up word. I looked it up in the dictionary, and it wasn't there. So, I don't know. Maybe I think it's like maybe a proper noun or something. But, well, there is the uh, classroom downstairs, if you want to take a look. But anyway, if you want to use the Devil's Path, just open the switch, step on there, and... Well, we would be able to go there if it weren't sealed. Why they bother shielding it, I don't know. We could just fly there with our airships. So, I don't know. But anyway, we got a classroom down here. You could talk to them if you want to learn some of the basics of the mechanics, but I don't think we need to do that. But if you do talk to everyone in the classroom there, and you can piss six feet in the air straight up, you get an achievement! No, no, just kidding. But you do get an achievement just for talking to everyone there. 
What do you mean, his men? I'm the only one. Uh, okay. But anyway, hmm, another locked door. I wonder where that goes. As far as achievements go, I'm not going to go too much into them. Most of them you'll get as you go playing the game normally anyway. But I will mention a few that you might have to go out of your way for. I'm not really that big on achievements or anything like that. So I haven't even gotten every achievement in the game here. Well, I've gotten most of them, except like the ones that require like ultra rare drops. So, yeah, some of them are pretty ridiculous, but oh well. Hey, I love Final Fantasy IV as much as the next guy, but even I'm not that insane. Just need a few good men to get the job done. Oh. Hmm. Where does your daughter sleep then if there's only one bed? I don't know. Oh, yeah, one other thing. Ow! Ow! Quit it. I just like how they put that in there. <laughs> you can examine the bookshelves if you want to see what kind of books it has around there, but, eh, nothing extraordinary there. But anyway, let's see what's over here. Oh, Rose's house, huh? No beds here either, huh? Nah, those are just lies. Fiendish slander. Oh, okay. I'll do the best I can. But yeah, after talking to Rosa's mom, you get a little more dialogue here. Most of the time, you only get new character thoughts like this after entering a new area or a specific event with a, an important NPC. There are a few times when you'll talk to relatively unimportant NPCs and get some dialogue, so I'll try to point that out, but for the most part, there's not too many of those ones. But anyway, another hidden treasure that wasn't there in the original. Okay, how's it going? Sure, why not? I like how they put these little dancers in the game. Nice touch. We need more things like that in JRPGs. I don't mean strippers, I mean just like little things that really have nothing to do with the plot or anything important. Just something to add a little bit of detail or flavor to the game. But anyway, you can get two hidden treasures here, including the Mighty Bronze Hourglass. You want to save those for a while. Those are really, really good in this version of the game. So yeah, I'm banning the slow status, but stop! Yeah, that's fine. I wouldn't worry about that. <laughs> but there are, seriously, there are some enemies where the stop status is virtually mandatory sometimes. Not often, but every now and then. I'm not going to abuse it too much. But anyway. Okay, so, yeah, I guess that's where that other locked door goes, so I was mentioning earlier. Now let's see, somewhere in the flowers, haha! Gold Needle, we might end up needing that. Let's see, got a Phoenix Down, awesome. And I think there's one more treasure around here. Haha, -ha! alright. Well, let's take a look at our inventory before heading out here. Sort everything out there. Got the Signet there. And let's see. We could sell the Red Fang and the Gnomish Bread, we don't really need those, but I wouldn't worry about it for now. There's nothing that I really care to buy, so... Okay, so now what I want to do, let's save here real quick, and I'm going to run into a specific enemy around here that you can't meet up with anywhere else to get that bestiary entry, so if I find it right away, great. If not, well, I'll do it later then. But I think you can meet up with it in the forest area specifically. Maybe some other areas around here too. Or we could fight these guys, why not? Okay, so, we got a couple new enemies here. Goblin and the Sword Rat there. One thing to keep in mind with the Sword Rat is that I think if you attack it and you don't uh, kill it, it can counterattack you. So you want to watch out for that. But I think we can pretty much almost guaranteed kill him, one shot him anyway. So, just something to keep in mind there. Goblins can also drop... Well, you know, no, I, that might be a little bit of a spoiler, so you know what, let's not do that. They have an ultra rare drop that you could possibly use, so. You know what, let's save after that one, 
Let's see, the other enemy we can meet up with around here is the Floating Eye, but we already got that for the Bestiary, so... One more enemy around here. Like I said, if I meet up with it right away, great. If not, I'll just off-screen finding it. Okay, here's the new enemies I was looking for. Helldiver. One thing about these guys is that when they attack you, they can inflict a, a slow or gradual petrifying status on you. So, it's something you want to watch out for. And if you didn't get an ambush like I did or a preemptive strike, uh, they might be able to fully petrify you by the time the battle's over. So, something to keep in mind. If that does happen, then well, use a gold needle. That'll cure that. So, all right. Got that taken care of. Let's see. How are we doing on HP there? You could use a little bit of health there. Hmm. Yeah, you know what? Let's just cure Kane. I was thinking about maybe going to the inn, but nah, I don't think that's necessary. Oh yeah, there is one other thing I wanted to mention uh, regarding using... Let's see, where is it? Ah, auto battle there. Yeah, if you want to, you can select a different command for auto battling. It's not like the PSP version, let's say, where you only auto battle, I think, like your last command or something or other like that. So that's something you can consider. Normally, I like putting the defend command in auto battle, ironically, simply because it does take a little while to scroll down the menu to defend sometimes, and it, you will need to defend in this version of the game. They make it much more useful there. You could also bind an item to auto battle or any other slot that you've got around here too, if you want to. So if you want to get quick access to potions, you can. You don't have to go through the item menu to do that. I'm not gonna do it right now, but you can if you want. So, same thing with Kane there. Just keep the attack command up there and jump items. That's pretty much all we need for now, but the setups will get much more diverse and complex as we go along there. So, okay, well, this is a chocobo forest around here. And let's see, we got a little white chocobo there who can restore our MP, but we really don't have a use for that. I mean, we do have MP in this version of the game, but well, that's for something else that we'll get later on in the game there. But for right now, not really important. You go up here, hmm, I wonder what's over there. In the original version, it was a, let's try this, no. Nah. Yeah, in the original version, that was a fat chocobo to store items, but in this version, we have unlimited inventory space, so I don't know what we do with that. Well, we'll find out eventually. Well, I do know, obviously. But anyway, take Chocobo here. Let's just head on to the next area. We don't need to fight enemies on the way to level grind or whatever there. So, and let's see. You know what? Let's save since I got that new bestiary entry there. We can't check our bestiary from the menu here. We'll learn how to do that well, soon enough, viewers. Soon enough. But anyway, let's head on into this cave here. Oh, hey, it's the old naming way. Yeah, I noticed you weren't in the training room like the original version. Oh. Well, I suppose not. Oh, mapping way! And what are you gonna do? Do you... Well, he was already saying he makes maps, apparently. Hey, alright! So, now we got a map here, and... Well, it fills out itself, so you don't have to draw it like some other games. And whenever you complete a floor of a dungeon on the map, you get items for it. The One thing I noticed in the original DS version of the game is that the map completion is really, really fickle. But it seems to be a little more forgiving in the uh, mobile and PC remakes. I don't know for sure. But anyway, uh, one nice thing about this version of the game is that when you bring up the map... It's sort of like translucent over the exploration there. So you don't have to just look at the map and and not where you're exploring there. So that's pretty nice. So let's have Kane jump on that one in the back there. Good, good Kane. Awesome. But anyway, yeah, we got a couple new enemies here. Let's see, we got Larva. And you'll see what they do soon enough. And the other guy in the back there, Eyewing Moth, can blind you. But I, fortunately, I got Kane in the air fast enough to be able to take care of that guy. 
Not so much that you really need to use jump against them, but I just wanted Kane to get in the air before, uh, well, I guess these guys aren't going to do it, but uh, let me see if I stick around long enough. There we go. Okay, yeah, they can cast slow on you, which is really annoying. Especially if they get it on both of you early in the battle, but, well, I got a little lucky there. So, oh, by the way, for those who haven't played any version of Final Fantasy IV, uh, Jump, basically, well, as you saw, lets Kane go in the air. He can't be targeted by anything. He's invulnerable while he's in the air. And when he comes back down, he deals double damage. So, that's pretty nice. So, let's keep an eye on our map completion here a little bit. Try to stay towards, like, the edge of the walls or the areas. That'll help you with your map completion there. But yeah, the items you can get from them are pretty good. And that'll help you save a lot of money there. Hmm, I wonder what that voice was. Can we go against the demands of that mysterious voice? Or should we just stay away? Find out next time on Let's Play Final Fantasy IV. This is H.G. Bailey, signing off. Have a good day. Oh yeah, and I almost forgot. Um, here's the character thoughts here. I wonder if that's the idolin that they're talking about. Hmm. Well, I guess we'll find out.